Hey people, welcome to the run test. It's Kieran here. Autumn is pretty much upon us and with it, the race season is open again. Those half marathons and marathons are going to be coming thick and fast. If like us, you're going to be racing, then you've come to the right place. In about two weeks, I'm going to be taking on a race called the Royal Parks Half Marathon. It's a really popular race here in London that takes you not only past some of the biggest sites the city has to offer, but you also get to through some of those really, really beautiful rural parks, including you know, one that most people will know, Hyde Park. It's a fantastic race, uh, great spirit, great crowds. I'm gonna be shooting for a PB. Now with that in mind, I thought it'd be really useful for the run testers to reveal some of their top picks of the kit that they use to go out and run and race half marathon. So in this video, we're gonna be dishing up our essential picks from shoes to clothes to fuel everything you might need to go and race a half marathon. So if you're about to go out and do one yourselves, here's some inspiration coming right up. So half marathon distance is a interesting distance because you're sort of getting into the realms of endurance running and there are a lot of shoes that do a lot better when you're endurance running than they do at short distances. And likewise, there's shoes that I test for races that I'd never dream of going over 10K in just because they're either a little bit firm or they just don't have the comfort level that I want for longer distances. Half marathon kind of sits on the edge of both of those. Um, so there are some shoes that I probably wouldn't use for a marathon that I would use for a 10K and vice versa. Half marathon shoe is a tricky one to choose, but my favorite shoe at the moment or favorite race shoe at the moment is Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Now this shoe can do anything. It's a fantastic shoe. I'm currently working through getting PBs in every distance at the moment. So I've got a PB at 5K, 10 miles, half marathon, nearly got a 10k um, pb uh, and i will be doing a chicago marathon in this shoe as well hoping to get quite a big pb in it and i think the beauty of the endorphin pro 3 is that it can handle all of those distances it's just a fantastic all-round race shoe that feels great at 5k feels fantastic at longer distance efforts um, it's comfortable it feels lightweight it's just got a lovely level of bounce and proportion in it but it's a little bit more subtle than something like the alpha fly or the vapor fly i don't really notice this too much on my feet when i'm running um but i can really pick up the pace in it and and really enjoy those runs it's just a lovely cruiser that can also go really fast as well so for half marathon distance this is my favorite shoe that you, you can pick uh, something like the Alpha Fly, I think is fine over half marathon distance, but I think that's probably, I'd probably prefer to use that for a marathon uh, race. Vapor Flies, they can do pretty much any distance as well, but I just don't think they're as comfortable as the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 for me. So if you, if you for me, if, you, if I'm going to do a half marathon, I want to know that I can do those faster efforts and the, the endurance efforts all pulled into one shoe. And that's why I go for the Endorphin Pro 3. My second pick for Marathon Essentials is the Saw Race Vest. Now Saw make a lot of kit that's very well designed for racing. It's probably the best brand out there if you're looking for the shaving seconds off of your time based on the, the quality and the lightness of the material uh, in the kit. Uh, the Saw Race Vest, I've actually got a few of these. A few of them are my Run Tester Vests. We've got Saw Race Vests, but also I've got my uh, Brighton Phoenix Saw Race Vest as well. And the first time I started wearing the Saw Race Vest, it was just, I was amazed at how lightweight it is. The material is just so thin, but still comfortable. It does, it's, it still feels very comfortable against the skin, but it's just so lightweight. If you sweat in this, it just disappears straight away. It's fantastic. Um, if you're really trying to shave seconds off your time and you want something that's just going to give you all out opportunity to run as fast as you can. The Saw Race Vest is really the best option that I've, I've ever found. What I would say about it though is that I'm a bit of a bulkier runner. So somebody like Nick who's got that sort of traditional fast runner uh, shape, he finds these fit very nicely for him. I, I find them to be quite tight. So normally I wear between small and medium in tops. Um, in the Saw Race Vest I tend to go for large just because they are so tight and they're, it's fine initially, but they can be quite uncomfortable if you're wearing a tight top throughout a race. So um, I go for large in these just because I like a little bit of room. But even the large, it, it's not massive. Um, it still feel, fits pr me pretty well. So definitely, but definitely if you're a bit bulkier like me, you probably want to go up a few sizes just to make sure it's comfortable on the run. Okay, my final pick for half marathon essentials is the Precision Fuel 
caffeine, 30 gram caffeine um, gel. Now I've been using precision fuel and hydration um, gels for a while now. Um, and I've just, I've never been a big fan of gels previously. I don't really, sometimes I don't really like the taste. I can find them quite awkward when I'm out on the run. Um, and sometimes I've had issues with my stomach um, because I've, I've tried something out that doesn't quite work for me. Never had any problems with pre precision fuel. They've, they've, um, I've taken six of them in the marathon before, no problems at all. And that includes the uh, new caffeine version. This has been out for a, uh, a few months now. Uh, what I like about the caffeine version for half marathons is that I only really take one gel with me on a half marathon. It's just a bit of a pick-me-up halfway through the race. I don't necessarily need the energy. It's just nice to get a little bit of a kick from that caffeine just to pep me up and keep me going for the remainder of the race. So I always go for just having one of these in my in my back pocket as a sort of uh, a secret weapon for when I need it. I don't really have a strategy at half marathon. For marathons, I do have a strategy, um, but it's just a great, really tasty it's it's thicker than what I found in a lot of gels, so it's quite nice to it's quite enjoyable to have on the run. It's not it doesn't feel like a hindrance. It feels quite nice to to actually eat one of these on the run, um, and it just goes down very quickly. So I definitely say that if you're looking for just a really nice little bit of help on a half marathon distance race, the caffeine version of the Precision Fuel um, 30 gram carb gel is a great option and really just. I, I like having this with me whenever I do a half marathon, just in case. Sometimes I don't use it, but um, just nice to have in, in your armory, just ready to go. So my first pick is these. I always wear a cycling short for any race. I think they don't chafe. They're much more comfortable. And I normally would wear, for all the marathons I've ever run, I've always gone for the Lululemon Fast and Free with the two leg pockets. Because I think you need, obviously for a marathon, you're taking what? four gels you're taking your phone you know you're you've got baggage and I don't like running with a bell so I find them annoying um but for a half I feel like I'm probably only going to run with my phone and maybe one gel or you know blocks or whatever so you don't think you need to carry as much for a half marathon it's not as far um so I'm gonna I'm gonna opt for these I've these are new ish I've only been running them for a, you know a few weeks but I absolutely love them they're the tracksmith Alston shorts and I mean they're super, they're really, they are expensive. I will, you know, cheaper options are available. New Balance have a really good pair of cycling shorts out at the moment. Um, but these are really, they're really nice. And I do love that they don't have any leg pockets. You have a pocket on the back, which is definitely big enough for your phone and a gel, which is all I'm gonna carry. Um, and it, sl it slots in there. It sits nicely on the small of your back. So there's no bouncing around. Um, I probably, I think for a marathon, I'd then have to carry a belt with more gels in or find people on the course, but for a half, perfect. Um, super comfortable, high-waisted, tuck your tummy in, really soft, and they have this really clever um, kind of sticky bit on the leg, which keeps them still. They do not move from your leg, they don't ride up, and that's just what you want. And I really rate them. I think they're really comfy and I will definitely be wearing them for the Royal Parks half because I just don't want baggage. I wanna, you know, I want I wanna feel kind of like I can move without having bulging pockets. And I don't think you need it for a half marathon. For a marathon, you probably do. Talking of gels, this is a super personal one. Nutrition is different for everyone. I have a funny relationship with gels. Some of them make me feel really sick. Some of them set my stomach off. I'm celiac, so I have a funny stomach anyway. Um, and I find cliff blocks are what works for me. Like I say, it's super personal, but I've used these for the last few marathons. I find them, I find it much easier to kind of chew one as I run than try and like get a gel down when I'm running. Um, if you've not seen them before, they're little blocks. And they kind of, they, you know, they do the same as the gel. I'd probably take two of them for a marath half marathon, probably one after about an hour and then one a few miles later. Um, but yeah, I will just probably take the rest out of the pack, maybe have an extra one in there and just fold it up really small in the back pocket and kind of go with them really. I think it is, it is personal, it is trial and error. For my last marathon, I did use Cliff Blocks and a Morton, one of the Morton caffeine ones at the end of the marathon. Um, but again, I just, I just don't love the texture. And I think, you know, I'm not going out to race, I'm going out to get round and to try and enjoy it. So obviously you do need to take something on, but um, I find that cliff blocks work for me. You can get them everywhere. I think they're about three pounds. Most running shops have them. Um, and if all else fails, they're on Amazon, but there are other places where you can get them. And last but not least, 
mean, it's always a tough choice for the run testers picking a shoe. And I would have, I was thinking of picking the Sorkin, Sorkin-y Endorphin Pro 3, and then I saw that everyone else has picked it. So I'm not picking that. I'm gonna pick the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer. Um, I've really, really enjoyed running in this shoe. It was, when I was thinking of doing the London Marathon, it was a contender for a marathon shoe. I really, I really do enjoy it. We all know I love a massive platform trainer and this is super plush, super comfortable, bouncy. It's a fun shoe to run in. And like I say, I'm not going out to Royal Parks to race and try and get a PB. I'm not doing that. I'm recovering from an injury. I wanna go and have a fun, you know, a fun race. And I think this is a shoe that puts a smile on my face when I'm running in it. It has got a carbon fiber plate. It is illegal, but I'm not gonna make the podium, let's be honest. It's got a massive, I think it's 47 millimeter stack height. We've done a first look. I'm pretty sure we're doing a re full review soon, but it's just a fun shoe. Um, New Balance say it can be like a training and a race day shoe. And I'd say that's what I've used it for. I've done a lot, a few long runs in it. I've done easy runs in it and I've done some kind of, tempo-y stuff in it. I probably wouldn't wear it on the track. It's not that comfortable around corners because it's so tall. Um, but for something like Royal Parks where it's mainly on road, this should be fun. So they are my half marathon picks. So I'm gonna dive straight in with one of the most important pieces of kit, obviously the pair of shoes. What shoes am I gonna race the Royal Parks half marathon in? Well, I'm going PB chasing. So only this choice really for me. These are the Nike Alphafly Next% 2. There's a couple of obvious reasons that I'm gonna go for these. They're just the fastest shoe I've ever run in. Uh, when I did the tests for our review, which you can find on the channel, I went out and I did my fastest ever mile in these shoes on very, very tired legs. They are built for racing. They give you the extra punch. And I believe particularly over that distance, the half marathon distance, you know, these will come into their own. I find them much, much better than the Alpha Fly Originals. I think it has made a bit of difference having this extra bit of the Zoom X foam underneath. I just find them a little bit easier to get on. They've stretched a bit. You know, I have a bit of a struggle getting my foot in this top bit, but over that distance, I'm willing to kind of take that sort of slightly sort of cramped feeling that I find with my feet because ideally I'm only gonna be out there for almost, if I get do it right, it'll be like 82 minutes or something. So yeah, for me, comfort, punch, you know, just that overall efficiency and speed, it's gonna to have to be the Alphafly Next Percent as my half marathon ratio. So next up, I'm gonna talk about fueling. Now, when it comes to running a half marathon, if you're only gonna be out there like me for around 90 minutes, the truth is that if I eat right in the build up to this race, I probably won't really need to fuel that much on the run itself. I should have enough in my kind of glycogen stores to get me around this marathon, but obviously it can help just to top up and have some extra just in case, or you know, to give you a little bit of extra available energy just in case you need it. So on my belt, I will be taking just one of these. Now this is a precision fuel and hydration, 90 gram carb gel pouch. Uh, I probably won't need all of that 90 grams, but the reason I'm taking it is exactly this. It's got a resealable top. So whatever I use, I use, I can reseal it and take that back into my training later. Uh, it also gives me the flexibility to take little bits as and when I need it throughout that half marathon. Maybe even later on, I'll just sort of take a third of this, which is the equivalent to one gel, reseal it and off I go. And I think for sure, if you're potentially gonna be out for longer, two hours, and you think you might be wanting to take kind of two to three gels in that time, if that's how you fuel, then having all of your energy in one pouch with that flexibility of eating as much as you want as you go, I think this is a really, really useful thing to look at. These are about five pounds a pop, not too bad when you consider you're getting three gels worth in one pouch. So worth a look, that's a precision fuel and hydration, 90 gram carb gel pouch. Now, when I'm running half marathons, I really like to be self-sufficient. I don't really like to bother with bag drop and all of that kind of stuff. I find it a bit of a faff. So I like to arrive at the start of the race with everything I need to leave when I finish the race. And to help me do that, I'm gonna be using this. Now, this is the naked running high capacity running vest. Now this is like a minimal running vest that lets you stash all of your essentials. It's got two stretch mesh front pockets, which are brilliant for popping in. I pop in headphones, I'll put a cash card, a bit of cash, I'll have my phone in there. I can take a selfie stick. Um, at the back, you've also got a larger back pocket. So that lightweight jacket that I'll be wearing in the morning to keep myself warm right up to the race start, I just take that off and pop it in the back here. It's also got pockets that you can sort of go down here on the front. 
So there's deeper pockets here as well. So if you want to put down, if you're filming or whatever, you want to put a selfie stick or whatever, you can also fit hydration flasks in there. Though I, I don't do that because I'll just drink cups of water off the stands on a half. I don't really feel like I need to hydrate that much throughout. Um, but it just basically lets me stash everything I need. It's nice and tight to the body. It fits really snugly. And my favorite thing is I tend to put it on over a base layer, but under my main t-shirt. So you can you can run and nobody sort of sees all the bits and pieces that you've got there. It's nice and snug. It's not in the way of your race number. All of that stuff is taken care of. And yeah, super minimal, uh, super durable as well, this one. And uh, yeah, I just think a really useful way of carrying all of those bits of kit that you might want to carry on a half marathon if you want to whip away at the end without worrying about having to go to the baggage collection. First dilemma for a half marathon, of course. Shoes, what shoes do you go for? Um, I didn't wear these for my recent half marathon PB, but on in retrospect, I think I will do for the next half marathon. It's the Saucony Pro 3. They're light, the speed roll pushes you forwards. Um, they're really airy on the upper. They're easy to put on. Um, they are very comfortable and yet they are responsive and aggressive enough to race a half marathon in. Saucony Pro 3 every time at the moment, hard to beat. Another newbie for me, as far as half marathons goes, is the Revy's Energy Strips. Uh, they've got 40 milligrams of caffeine in them, um, so they give you a good old boost, um, but it saves me using the 200 milligram Eutropics um, sachets, which I was using from Cis Beta Fuels. Um, so yeah, Revy's Strips, just have one right at the start of the race or have one ready to go in your pocket in the middle of the race, and they really gave me the boost I needed, and I got my PB, so I guess they worked. Another new one for me, it's a running bra, it's the Tracksmith Alston bra. Uh, I wore it for the first time again at the Draycott Half Marathon and it's just really comfortable. It's got a pocket in the front of it and um, you can kind of store things in there if you want to. It's nice enough that you can wear it on its own if you want to. It's not for the big chested, I'll be honest, um, but yeah, it's fine for me. Um, so that's the Tracksmith Alston bra, keeps you uh, nice and cool and nice and in place. Uh, so for my half marathon essentials, a lot of the stuff is very similar to my marathon essentials, as you probably would guess. That starts with the shoes where I think, you know, Nike make the best kind of carbon racing shoes going at the moment. Um, I, you know, my I really like the Endorphin Pro 3. It's a great half marathon shoe. My half marathon PB is actually in the A6 Meta Speed Sky Plus. But if I was choosing any shoe for a half marathon, it would be one of the Vaporfly and the Outfly 1 or even two. And of the three, probably the Outfly 1 remains my overall favourite. You know, it's just, I think you get a little bit more cushion and bounce than you get from the Vaporfly and it's a little bit lighter than the Outfly 2, a little bit more nimble. So yeah, I'd probably pick the Outfly 1 over them, though on a twisty course, the Vaporfly might have a little bit of an edge. And in general, it's all pretty much much for muchness, I think, between these shoes. They're all fantastic. And for fueling, I also use Morton when I'm fueling for a half marathon, like I do in a marathon. In a marathon, I'll carry a lot of drinks and stuff with me. You need a lot of fuel for it. Don't need so much for a half marathon, so I would have one of the 320 drink mix before I started the race. Uh, so that's 80 grams of carbs. I'd have that in the hour, hour and a half before the race. Just gives you a really nice feeling of fullness, but not, you know, uh, unpleasantly so. There's no kind of gastro distress from chugging down a load of gels or stuff. It's just a good steady release of those fast acting carbs to help you fuel through the race. And then I probably would take a gel along the way. This is the Morton Gel 100. Not too fast what the gel would be during the race. I'd have it probably around halfway and just, hopefully giving a little bit of a uh, mental boost and thinking that I'm definitely going to be fueled enough to the end. Not sure how necessary it is to have another kind of 20 grams of carbs during a half, but yeah, that's what I would use. And the last thing I picked out, uh, again, essentials are strong word here. This is more my favorite. These are my favorite half marathon shorts. Uh, these are the Saw Elite Speed, you know, half tights. Um, they are just very, very comfortable. They're the most comfortable shorts I've used. They're really thin material, really lightweight. Uh, they feel fantastic to wear kind of for races at any distance. And in a half marathon, I don't need a load of storage. They've got little pocket on the back to pop my gel in uh, for the race and other than that uh, there's nothing I really need from them like I say I don't think these are essential they're expensive shorts you can certainly go and enjoy a half marathon in an array of other shorts I have done that myself but yeah if I'm just racing all out and I just need a pocket for a gel then yeah the saw elite shorts are great so there you have it that's been our top picks of gear you can use to run a half marathon all of our preferred stuff if there's something that you think we've missed, so they're really sort of cracking items that you always use when you're running your half marathons, please let us know. We're always up for hearing about things that we may not know about yet. Tell us in the comments. If there are any questions about the kit that we've just recommended, also hit us up in the comments. We'll endeavour to answer those. If you're going to go out and race a half marathon soon, you've got a goal that you're trying to hit. Tell us what it is. We want to hear about people going out and 
pushing their boundaries, all that kind of stuff. Check out loads of the other videos. We've got lots of stuff about kind of race shoes, about watches, all the gear you need to enjoy your running and be the best runner that you can be. Uh, as ever, thanks very much for watching. We have been the Run Testers and we will see you again soon on the channel.